You mentioned Oregon. I mentioned the team that kind of had a fluky loss. So that's going to get us right into the, the first bet of the week. Look, the holy trinity of college football weirdness is Laramie, Rustin, and Lubbock. <laughs> Last week, we warned you about Texas Tech going to Laramie, and it was just a weird situation. They led 17 0. The game wound up going to overtime. They had a 111 yard advantage, plus one in turnovers. It was a weather delay. Somehow, Texas Tech managed to lose that game. And this is kind of like what you were just saying. They're a six and a half point home underdog now against Oregon. Like, was what we saw last week, does that mean Texas Tech isn't the team that we thought was going to be a Big 12 sleeper or not? Or were we, were we wrong? Or was it just a kind of cir circumstance of all these weird events and just kind of just crazy things happen? Look, I saw them high on Texas Tech. I think they have a, a chance to have a very special season. I think you get them at home now off of that game where they really should have won. Look, I had Wyoming, but, 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 they, but they should have won. And you get Tyler Shuck now, former Oregon quarterback, who's going to be a little extra motivated uh, against his former team. But they've, there's, some, like I said, some weird things have happened in Lubbock. They've pulled some big upsets in the past there, played some big boys really well. But I get that the football argument really doesn't say Texas Tech should beat Oregon because Oregon is a more talented team and a better team. But at the same time, the number, no, the number less than seven is telling me that the odds makers are quite comfortable going into this game knowing that, they're, they, they, knowing that they need Texas Tech. It's just money coming in. Okay, you think Oregon's going to win by, by seven, which is a very key number. Fine, you're good. So the first real actual wager that I have made this week, all these are real actual wagers that I make. It's Texas Tech plus a six and a half, and I know, and I know you hate it, and I know you're holding back right now, just I, dying okay. to unload. Okay, so I I wouldn't take Oregon minus six and a half, I, I just as a as a principle, like I'm just not doing that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't bet on Oregon, but any other team, USC, Washington, anyone else, I'm just it's not a, a, the best wager to take the road team in the situation. But you you have to look at the way Tech played against Wyoming. You mentioned all the things that happened, you know, it was in Lubbock, blah blah blah. They're up 17 0. 10 of those points were off turnovers. And they scored three points the rest of regulation. Their offense was not very good. Drops, shut got hit all game. And then defensively, they lost a pass rusher and their middle linebacker in week one. So they're, they're down some, some players. And you mentioned it. The hardest part for me as a former player is figuring out the, the wagering mind and the wagering ideas and the former player ideas. Because if you look at this, at, at this on tape and just personnel wise, there is not a position Texas Tech is better than working at. They're not better quarterback, offensive line, defense. Like, where are they better than Oregon at? And that, I think, is, is, is what I come back to, is that if Oregon is the team that people expect them to be, which is a playoff contender, you go into Lubbock and you win this game by double digits. That is what a playoff contender does. But your point, Lubbock is hard to play. Right, and Texas Tech is kind of in desperation mode. If they don't win this game, they're they're zero and two off a season that we thought as kind of a dark horse mm -hmm. Big Twelve contender. And so, I think they're going to lose by double digits. I'm not wagering Oregon for this <laughs> because I think again that like that's against my principles to, to, to wager right. really on, on a road team getting six and a half like that. But Oregon is the better football team. They have better players. Texas Tech struggled to stop Wyoming's quarterback from rushing the football. What's going to happen with Bo Nix now? Like, I just think Oregon has a lot of advantages, and they're sort of out for blood this year. People are not picking them to be very good. And I'm excited to watch Oregon play this week. I, I think Tech loses this game by by double digits. It's not really an Oregon thing. I just know these teams very well. Um, but you're, you know, your, your first bear bet is, is Tech plus six and a half. The total in this one, 68 and a half. So very high total. Lubbock, by the way, the one time I went to Lubbock was like the greatest night in Lubbock history with the Crabtree Texas game. I, you talk about hard place to play, hard place to get to and yeah. from. Flight, my, my, my itinerary on the flight home, it, like there were a bunch of people that drove like two hours to some airport. It's like most of the flights were sold out on Sunday. I found like a Southwest flight that I took <laughs> from Lubbock to El Paso. And then like I had checked, checked the bed because I was away since like Wednesday or there was the Thursday game prior. So had to like check, my, get, claim yeah. my bag, go back in, check in for my Delta flight from El Paso to Atlanta and then Atlanta back to Hartford. So yeah, yeah, through three flights, two airports and, and two check-ins from uh, 
Lubbock home. Last one here in this game as we kind of preview all these games going forward. How much do you put into the fact that like Lubbock, as you mentioned, non-conference games, they cover and win a lot of those games? Like, do you, is that a thing that you, even over coaching staffs, over different tenures, do you, do you weigh that in your picks each week? I, I do take it into consideration. Now, it's not all, it's not, it's not the thing that I'm going to say, oh, this trend is tried and true. But, but I do think there are a lot of situations where the teams and the players may change, but the situation remains the same. And the situation is coming home in your home opener in a spot that's typically been very difficult to play. And now you have a, 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 a team on the road off of a massively successful week. And the number, but as I say, the, 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 I, Oregon is a better team, and, there, and there's no position unit on yeah. the field that Oregon is better. But the number uh, is telling me yeah. that the odds makers are very content, say, uh, uh, welcoming all that Oregon money in, and that always. That will always give me pause when I see a number and I interpret it as they're kind of leading you in one direction. And the second game is the exact same yeah. way. Like, I, I, you have something else in this game before we move on? Move on? No, I'm, like, nope, I'm good. Because yeah, I was going to say, like, Cal, when I saw Cal getting six and a half against Auburn, I could not yeah. believe the, the number in this game. Let's get to your second bear bet here. Auburn at Cal. Auburn's favored by six and a half. The total is 54 and a half. Auburn beat UMass last week in 59-14. 300 yards on the ground in, in, in the first game with the new staff. But Cal, Bear, Cal, 58 points, the, the most in Justin Wilcox's era. They beat North Texas 58-21. Yeah, Jake Spavlo came in right away and had an immediate impact on that offense. And that's an offense that we haven't seen from the Golden Bears probably since Sonny Dyke was there. And, oh, easily, yeah. And, and it, it, look, the, it, it, as long as Jackson is coming back, and I think think he is he and off the running back who had a massive week last week i think they're going to give auburn a ton of problems i love cal plus the six and a half that is my second bear bet of the week i, I took the golden bears plus the six and a half you got the defensive mind to wilcox like i didn't know what to make of cal but it's clear i look I, I know it was north texas and they're not a great team but offensively they just looked like a confident yes. football team and auburn They've got some injuries as well that they might need to be concerned. Another, uh, you know, this is this this has all the feels and looks of a yeah. of a Pac-12 after dark special out there, Strawberry Canyon. I, I do like Cal plus the points here. I have wagered on this myself. It's worth noting, you know. The 2020 season, the Pac-12 was wiped mostly yep. out for COVID. The next year, Cal was dealing with a bunch of COVID issues. It just was a weird Still, year for yeah. them in, in Berkeley. Other than, than, than if you throw 2021 out, Justin Wilcox is 11-1 straight up in non-conference play. Cal starts fast each and every year. It's a hard place to play. It's a night game. And there's just a way that the Cal plays just their physicality on defense. That's hard for teams mm -hmm. to kind of figure out early in the season. You mentioned Auburn, right? A lot of rushing last weekend, but not great in the trenches. Like some, some concerns. Right. And the Justin scoring margin that game was like 14 points. He only won by, you know, by 45. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, of meat, I think, uh, for, for Cal here. Bear Bets full episodes drop twice a week right here on the Bear Bets YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to stay ahead of the odds and let's celebrate all of our wins together.